Good morning. It's October 21st, 2023. God bless you. Ciao. So many things. Let us pray. Let us surrender to God. Because suffering brings surrender, or it can. That is its purpose. The purpose of suffering is surrender. From suffering to surrender to supernatural, spiritual power. That is our path. And death will come in that process and war. And we war not against the bodily people that we see in our lives and in the earth. We war not against the flesh and the blood, but against principalities, against powers, against darkness and wickedness in high places in the spiritual realms. Therefore, we pray for the mind of Christ, which is the highest mind that consciously lives in the highest spiritual places of heaven and is seated with Christ in heavenly places in the authority of Christ, is surrendered and submitted to Christ in us by the power of the Holy Spirit. It does nothing on its own. It does nothing through the ego, for the ego is surrendered to death. Each one taking up their cross and following Christ within the personal cross, which is part of our own personal path, our story, our path from suffering to surrender to supernatural resurrection power. For I have died. I have been crucified with Christ. Therefore, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The world is at war. There's so many things that we cannot speak about online. My channel on YouTube is getting less views and I know I can see silly things happening on my YouTube channel that are not, um, that don't make sense. So I can see that I've had some warnings and I'm not able to speak about a lot of things on this channel and it's being shadow banned. So, we must be wise and we must be innocent at the same time as the Bible tells us. We must have such wisdom, but not the wisdom of the wicked, for their wisdom is foolishness. But we must have the wisdom of heaven. In this, we are safe. And we must have the innocence of the lamb that is slain. And in that, we will be given the power of the roar of the Lion of Judah, the roar of true worship around the throne of God that scatters every enemy. And this we don't do in the flesh. We do it in the spirit. But it manifests heaven 
to earth in the flesh. We are quiet and silenced as lambs to the slaughter, misunderstood, misrepresented in the fleshly realms. We will be stoned as Stephen, but even as Stephen is stoned because he is in Christ. As he is being stoned from every side, he is looking up to heaven with glory on his face and a smile because the glory that he is beholding while he is being stoned and persecuted and killed is a glory that is far exceeding what is happening to him in the flesh. And his war is won in the spirit. And he is taken up to heaven. I pray this revelation every day now, the revelation of Stephen, even in his death. And the world is at war. It is an unholy war, an ungodly war, a wicked and evil war. And all that is happening around us in this world is meant to reflect back to us what is happening within as within, so without, as above, so below. And if we are only able to look at the outward, well, the Bible tells us, man looks upon the outward, but God looks within. And so we must ask for sight to see deeper than what is happening on the outward and to go deep and walk the path into the kingdom of God that takes us through the darkness of the ego to victorious, overcoming life in the spirit. And we have this promise and this instruction. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, beseeching us by meekness and gentleness of Christ, that though we do not walk in the flesh, we don't live for this bodily presence on the earth. We do not war against bodies and blood. The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. They are not natural. But they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds, for the casting down of imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, being ready to revenge and avenge all disobedience only when our obedience is fulfilled. And when does that happen? It happens in surrender. And so we cannot conquer these spiritual forces and wickedness in high places unless we are walking in the obedience of Christ. For we do not look on the outward appearance. If any man is in Christ, He has Christ's authority. And so the world's war is escalating. This unholy war this planned wars upon the hinge of the financial system. The world leaders need no money. The elites need no money. They have only used money as a source of bait for the world. They do not need money. So we must go beyond this concept that they are doing this for money. Yes, those on lower realms Excuse me, I'm tearing today. 
money is only a bait of the enemy because it is attached to the flesh in this life it becomes a source of conflict and challenge to every one of us to every one of us it is a challenge in every area in areas of love and relationship of conflict in areas of lying in areas of greed in areas of selfishness in areas of integrity we could go on and on and on and on and on and so money was created for this, not because the elites need money, because they made it and they continue to create it and they continue to rule over the nations. Psalm 2, why do the nations conspire together? Together. The world is one. Why do the nations conspire together? Lord, give us the mind of Christ, the higher mind that surpasses all these levels of consciousness that cannot see past the systems of this world. Give us the mind of Christ right now, oh God. Holy Spirit, we ask for it. The higher mind that our sight would go right up to see from heaven. Why do the nations conspire together against the Lord, against the Holy One? And so they use money to test, and God allows that, so that we may have the means to take this path. All of these testings are means in our journey to go through the darkness of the ego, to go down to hell and Hades as Jesus says, you gotta follow me, you gotta follow me. And where did Jesus go? Well, he went to the cross, he died, he was buried. He went down to hell in Hades. He did warfare with hell. He took the keys of hell and death and he ascended. And so this is the path we must follow continually because it then takes us into the kingdom of God, which is ever expanding and ever enlarging and ever increasing. And so we walk this path of continuum constantly, continually in every moment, consciously, By grace, through faith, in what is unseen. We believe in the unseen, therefore we have faith, an ever-increasing faith, because we live in the realms that are unseen. We understand that warfare is in realms that are unseen. We understand that we ascend in heavenly realms that are unseen. And this manifests on earth, even as the prayer of Christ says, as it is in heaven, let it be on earth. Until my dying day, this flesh passes away, ever increasing glory. May I walk in through this path of Christ, from suffering to surrender to supernatural power. And so this war, this unholy, wicked war, all prophesied in the Bible, the kings of the East, Russia and China, they will rise up against the West. We see this. I expect China to go to war with the country that starts with a T and the United States to probably get involved in that third war. And so it will be a triad. And the United States put out a warning today for the first time in history, a warning of caution to everyone, basically to watch their back. The nations conspire together. If we can understand this, we can come out of worldly, fleshly, carnal warfare, and we can realize that we are one. We are not battling against flesh and blood. To kill our fellow brother or sister is murder, and that is mental illness. That is hell's realms. The world is experience, experiencing the realms of hell here on earth. Are you at war in your life? 
against spirits or you are at war with your brother or sister, your husband or wife? What is this war revealing to us? Where is the surrender in this war? Where is the victory? There is a part of the ego that must be surrendered, part of the flesh, that which is outside the mind of Christ and the heart of God. And so we take the path from suffering to surrender, to supernatural resurrection power. As unholy wars mount up in the earth, all planned, even so, deeper still, we fall into the bosom of God. And we trust God that we may move from the surprises of attacks of war to the surprises of miracles of heaven. Even in suffering, we can expect through faith the surprise of miracles. Just as Stephen in his death was overcome with miraculous glory as he entered heaven in his death. Even so, we ask to experience the surprises of heaven and the miracles of heaven as the war, world's war against one another and against humanity. Even so, God, let us be surprised with glory an ever-increasing glory as this world fades away. There is no surprise to the nations of this world. There are no surprises in weather, in money, in finance, in war, for they are all conspiring together. But we trust in our God Almighty, who brings miracles of heaven in the midst of suffering and death. And we are overcome, and we overcome, through the power of Christ in us, even in death. Hell has no grip, death has no stain or sting. This is the mind we seek, the mind of Christ. And so as demons and mental illness and war rages all around us, through us, in us, we seek a deeper surrender. The surrender of the ego. That we may see resurrection glory before us and our faces may shine and be radiant with this glory that reverberates in the realms, the power and authority which we carry through Christ in us, the hope of glory. And this earth is fading away. It is passing away as we venture through this pilgrimage, it becomes dim and heaven shines more radiantly. And we ascend in this mind and through the heart of God, we abide. We ask for grace today, O oh God, in the waging of wars, grace to surrender grace to be healed, grace to radiate your glory, to receive 
through this surrender. Amen.